1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in fullest measure. Peter was called primarily to preach the gospel to the Jews, even as Paul was called primarily to preach the gospel to the non-Jews, called the Gentiles. There are different ministries in the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that there was any conflict between Paul and Peter's ministry. They recognized that God had called them to work in different spheres. But Peter's primary burden was for the Jewish people. And one would think that this letter was written by Peter primarily to the Jewish Christians who were now scattered, perhaps because of persecution in Jerusalem and in the land of Palestine, now scattered, as it says here in the first verse, through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. But in another sense, it applies to all Christians, for all of us are really strangers and foreigners here on this earth. And when Peter writes in the first verse to those who reside as aliens or foreigners, in a sense that applies to every one of us, for our citizenship is not of this world. We are to live in this world as those who in a very real sense have come here as visitors to a foreign country, this not being our home. This is something that is repeatedly emphasized in the New Testament. Now, this was not true of the Israelites under the Old Testament. To them, God gave the land of Canaan to be their own property, and even today the Jews live in Canaan, now called Israel, as their own property. But to us, God has not given any particular land on this earth, because we are to be strangers, even as Jesus, our head, was a stranger in this world. He belonged to heaven, and so do we. And concerning us, Peter says in the second verse, we are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, that's the first person of the Trinity, by the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, the second person of the Trinity. So Peter, like the other apostles, believed in God as a Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, having different functions but yet equally one God. And each of these functions are mentioned in verse 2. God the Father chose us according to his foreknowledge. Foreknowledge indicates that God knows everything about all that's going to happen all the way into the future. He doesn't influence our choice, but yet he knows what our choice is going to be. He does not predestine us, anyone, to go to hell, but he has chosen those whom he knew by his foreknowledge would respond to the call of the gospel to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. And so it says here that we are chosen by God, not in an arbitrary way, as though God were picking lots from the human race, but according to his foreknowledge. There is no partiality with God, as Peter himself says later on in the same chapter, verse 17. God is impartial, and yet he has chosen us according to his foreknowledge. And this choice leads on to the separating or sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification is a word which means to set apart. And the Holy Spirit, who is now in the world, 
sets us apart from the rest of the world to be God's exclusive possession. The word sanctify is sometimes misunderstood as though it meant that we were already holy. If we understand holiness aright, it begins with being set apart. And the word sanctify or sanctification or saints are all used in different senses and essentially what it means is to set apart. It begins with a crisis when we are born again, when the Holy Spirit by one act sets us apart from the rest of the world as the children of God, we who were formerly the children of the devil, and then he continues his sanctifying work in us, increasingly setting us apart from sin progressively throughout our life. Until finally, when Jesus returns in glory, he will set us apart completely even from this body of sin and give us a glorified body. This is referred to in verse 2 as the sanctifying work of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has come into our lives to set us apart. This is something very important for us to realize that the primary work of the Holy Spirit is to sanctify us or set us apart from the world, increasingly from evil and from sin that dwells in our flesh. And what is the purpose of this setting apart work of the Holy Spirit? So that we may obey Jesus Christ. Now many have misunderstood the teaching of the New Testament as though it had nothing to say with obedience. The New Testament speaks much concerning obedience. Obedience to God's commandments is not an Old Testament teaching alone. It is a New Testament teaching as well. In fact, we are commanded to obey far higher standards under the New Testament than the Israelites were ever required to under the Old. That comes through very clearly in the Sermon on the Mount and in the teachings of all the apostles. James particularly says in the second chapter that faith without works of obedience is a dead faith. And so Peter also says that the work of the Holy Spirit of setting us apart is in order that we might obey Jesus Christ. And this is particularly significant when we consider John chapter 14 where Jesus speaks about the coming of the Holy Spirit and he speaks of it in relation to obedience to the commandments. John 14, verse 15 and 16. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. But his commandments are of a far higher standard than the Old Testament commandments, as Matthew 5, 6 and 7 indicate very clearly. And therefore, he says in the next verse, John 14, 16, I will ask the Father... And he will give you another helper, that is, to help you obey these commandments. And that's the same thing we see in 1 Peter 1, 2. That we may obey Jesus Christ, we are set apart by the Holy Spirit. And to be sprinkled with his blood. We need the sprinkling of his blood to cleanse us from past disobediences. But God is not going to sprinkle us with his blood if we have not repented of our past disobediences and desire to obey in future. And that's why in 1 Peter 1, 2, obedience to Christ comes before being sprinkled with his blood. For that is the purpose with which we are sprinkled with his blood. That you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. This is why repentance must come before cleansing. The apostles preached repentance first. Repentance from disobedience, that we may obey Jesus Christ and thus be sprinkled with his blood. This is not salvation by works, but it is salvation by faith that results in the works of obedience produced by the Holy Spirit's power. And this is the true gospel.